question is, can we pr provide evidence that Hiantos in an animal model buffers this, this withdrawal state? We have it in the human condition, but we wanted to see what it might do in the animal condition. So in this experiment, what happens is that you give, um, in our case, morphine for seven days, and then um, on, the, uh, on the, the eighth day, you give an injection of uh, naloxone, which blocks the opiate receptors and precipitates withdrawal. In this particular experiment, 36 hours later, you gave the animal a choice between the compartment in which it had experienced um, here, the, the, um, the uh, naloxone precipitated withdrawal and uh, a compartment that it hadn't visited. And what you see in every instance is that the animal develops an aversion. Sorry, I, I gave you the wrong one. It's, it's this dark histogram. The animal develops an aversion to the compartment in which it had experienced the naloxone precipitated withdrawal. But on this measure, Hiantos did not blunt that aversive property. However, when we did a more conventional, sorry for the busyness of this slide, but there are standardized measures of looking at with physiological withdrawal symptoms in rodents that are precipitated again by naloxone or simply by uh, withdrawing um, the opiate. And what happens is that we see that there's an attenuation. I have a summary slide in a moment, but across many of these um, standardized symptoms of uh, withdrawal, we find that Hiantos does indeed have a very powerful uh, effect as shown in this slide using the, um, the uh, Gellert, uh, very standardized withdrawal test, Gellert-Holtzman test, where you summarize all of those values on the last slide. So these are the withdrawal scores in animals not treated with Hiantos, and you can see quite nicely that 100 milligrams and 250 milligrams nicely attenuate the withdrawal symptoms. So again, our behavioral pharmacology is confirming in this instance what we knew from the human, uh, but it does set up, as you'll see in a moment, the opportunity to correlate neurochemical experiments with the behavioral experiments to try to get a better insight into how Hiantos might be acting. Now, we heard this morning in the very first talk about the compelling evidence, both longstanding in the animal literature, but I think Marco's work is amongst the best in the world, uh, implicating the neurotransmitter dopamine in many aspects of uh, uh, drug incentive motivation and the, um, the impetus to seek drug reward. And so um, we were anxious to see whether we could look at the effects of Hiantos on the dopamine system. Now, this slide goes back 20 years um, and uh, reminds us that if we use the in vivo, so for a freely moving animal, unanesthetized, if you put a small dialysis probe into that animal's brain and you put it into the nucleus accumbens, which is where Marco was looking at his pet signals most of the time, and then you look at what happens when you give an injection, in this case of morphine, what you see is a significant increase in dopamine in the nucleus accumbens uh, in response, in this case, to 20 milligrams per kilogram of morphine IP. And then on this graph, uh, it's showing what happens when you uh, give naloxone and you can get um, a decrease in the, in the signal in uh, animals treated repeatedly with, with opiates and, and, and see a neurochemical correlate of withdrawal. So what we did, what Soyan did uh, with Kitty's help, is <clears throat> replicated in our hands uh, what had been reported many times, that if you give an injection of morphine, you get this beautiful increase in dopamine. And what we're showing you here is the comparison of the first response to morphine as compared to the seventh measurement after the animal had been given morphine uh, daily for seven, seven days. And you can see that these values, whether it's the acute or the semi-chronic, continue to give you this beautiful increase in dopamine. What we also observed um, was a concomitant increase in the major metabolites of dopamine, DOPAC and HVA, and very little effect on a metabolite of serotonin. So um, then what we were interested in, I'm just showing you this, um, I'll get to the point in a moment, but we've also done countless experiments in which we've done similar things by giving an injection of a psychostimulant, in this case, the amphetamine. But what I want you to notice is that in the last experiment, 
dopamine went up and the metabolites for the opiates also rose. Psychostimulant drugs have a very distinctive signature in which the um, major compound dopamine is increasing, whereas the metabolites are decreasing, presumably because amphetamine blocks reuptake of dopamine and prevents this uh, intracellular metabolism from taking place. What we see next is what does Hiantos itself do to brain dopamine? So this has never been done before, obviously. And so what we have is a vehicle condition. And then we have Hiantos. Hiantos is delivered by gavage directly into the animal's stomach. The human patients take it as a pill. Uh, and what you see is a very robust increase in dopamine that's produced by Hiantos. Now, we were doing the behavioral experiments and the chemistry together, and when we saw this, we were quite frankly worried that we might be dealing with a drug that had potential uh, abuse liability. And so it's important to remember that the, that the uh, place preference data do not suggest that Hiantos has uh, rewarding properties by itself. Um, the other thing about Hiantos is that it also causes a very sharp and significant increase in DOPAC and HPA, these metabolites of dopamine, and has no effect whatsoever on the serotonin system. So this looks a little bit like an opiate. It certainly doesn't look like a psychostimulant, but I could have put up here um, an atypical neuroleptic drug, and you'd see exactly the same profile. And we're beginning to suspect that Hiantos might have properties that uh, may be related to, um, to uh, antipsychotic drugs. Um, the next experiment that we did uh, was to look at the effect of, um, of Hiantos on um, repeated injections of, uh, of uh, morphine. And then, as you'll see in the following slide, the effects on naloxone precipitated withdrawal. So again, this is the classical effect that we have now seen many times where Hiantos caused an increase in dopamine. Interestingly, the very first time we combined Hiantos with morphine, it, see, it, it blunted the effect of morphine alone. This seems to be possibly an acute effect to which tolerance develops because on the seventh day, that effect has dissipated. And it, now it's not combining uh, I mean, it's raising the baseline, but the, uh, there's no occlusion by Hiantos of the morphine-induced increase in dopamine. So they're probably acting by some quite different mechanism. The really interesting experiment uh, that Soyang conducted was this final one in which we looked at the effects of Hiantos on buffering the effects of naloxone precipitated withdrawal. So I'll draw your attention first to this blue line uh, these are animals that had been given uh, morphine for seven days, were then given an injection of naloxone, which precipitated the withdrawal symptoms that I described earlier. And what happened in the case of dopamine was a significant, a precipitous and significant and sustained reduction in dopamine. That perhaps uh, is, um, and, and people who are experiencing uh, um, this withdrawal obviously say that it's, a, it's a, an aversive state. Perhaps it's the case that uh, naloxone precipitated withdrawal causes a significant reduction in dopamine that's contributing to the aversion that's caused by, by naloxone precipitated withdrawal. Here's the interesting thing. When you give Hiantos and then you precipitate withdrawal, you completely buffer. You don't prevent the decline that's induced by naloxone, but you completely buffer the, uh, the uh, significant decrease below baseline. Um, so we're very interested in, in, in that particular observation. So what do we, what do we have here? Um, you know, we could have found nothing, uh, but we, we took uh, a compound that had been de developed in, in very good faith using a different... Um, uh, philosophy of, of drug discovery, and then applied it to a more classical uh, Western European, North American approach to uh, analyzing the effects of drugs on brain and behavior, and saw some very promising